everybody, Christina Careless here. Uh, today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to do a photo manipulation with GIMP. And I am using 2.8. There is one feature on here that is not available in 2.6. So if you have 2.6, I actually suggest getting 2.8. It's not super different, but there are some cool new features. Okay, so first of all, you'll need a background and someone to put in the background. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a different skyline because I don't want all the trees and the water and their sky in the background. I want to create my own. So I'm going to use the free select tool and I'm going to select around the flowers, well, around the flower field. And I'm not doing this very pretty. I suggest taking a lot of time on it and actually zooming in and doing it that way. But for now this will work for an example. Just so I can show you what to do. Okay, and then you're going to copy and paste. Then you're going to create a new layer. So now you can delete your background. See, now you have no sky. So we're going to go ahead and create a new layer. Well, actually we're going to do ah, uh, we just need two and put them below your flowers. Okay, so go ahead and bucket fill the very bottom one with just blue. And we are going to click on the next layer. Oops, I don't want to name it. And we're going to go down to render, clouds, and solid noise. And we are going to create some clouds. And you can change however you want this to make it fit your photo. Okay. So you want to make it to where the black goes away and the white just overlays. And I'm actually going to duplicate this layer, that way the white shows up a little bit more. And I'm going to merge down into the blue. Okay, now to make the, la or the second layer of clouds. Go to Render, Clouds, and then you're going to use Fog, which is a feature that only 2.8 has. Well, it's new, and I love it. I want to use it all the time. <laughs> okay, so now it kind of creates a choppy, um, lots of clouds in the sky. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to blur them a little bit. That way they are not as sharp. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and blur it just by four. That way it blends a little bit better, but they still stand out. And then I'm going to merge those layers together. And the next thing I want to do is I want to create a layer of flowers to go over top of her when I copy her onto the picture. And these are not going to be very pretty. I hope that if you are trying to do this tutorial you will take the time to actually cut this out very pretty. Because if you're lazy with the cutout then it's gonna show. <coughs> okay. And then I'm going to copy and then I'm going to paste. Again, creating a floating layer. Now I'm going to, well, I would cut her out, but I've already got her pre-cut out. And of course I cut her out using the free select tool. And then I'm just going to paste and create a new layer. And I'm going to scale her up so that she doesn't look so small. And now I'm going to put her underneath the flower layer and move her down into it. Okay, so now that she's actually in the flowers, I am going to blur the edge of her and the edge of the flowers. That way they actually look like they were together. Okay, 
And how I do that is I alpha to selection and then I shrink, invert the selection, and Gaussian blur. We're going to do this one twice. Okay. And it's still very choppy because I didn't actually do a good job at the cutout, but you get the gist. I'm going to move her over just a little bit. Okay. So now I'm going to, I want to sharpen her up because she's not quite as sharp as the picture uh, underneath her. So we're going to go to enhance, sharpen, and I'm only going to do about 10. There we go. Okay, now another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a reflection up here in her sunglasses. That way it actually looks like she's a part of the picture. And we're going to paste. Oop. We're going to copy and paste the flowers that I already cut out. Because I don't want to have to cut out more flowers. I'm just going to shrink them super tiny. And I'm going to zoom in so that you guys can see what I'm doing. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to duplicate this layer so that I have one for each of her uh, eyes for her sunglasses. And I'm going to rotate them. And I'm going to flip this one so that it looks doesn't look like it's the same flower in there. A little bit more. We'll go ahead and scale this one up. up. So now you want to merge these two layers and take the little eyeball and click that. This way now I can select around her sunglasses and hair. I'm doing this because I don't want the flowers to be on her face, just in the reflection of her sunglasses. And then you want to invert the selection, that way it's selecting the rest of the picture, and you want to delete it. So now they're just inside of it. And now we're going to go ahead and find... Uh, a mode that works for it. You can do quite a few different modes, but I'm going to go ahead and do overlay just because I think it fits better. And I'm going to smudge the rough edges around her sunglass bottom. That way it looks more realistic. Okay, so now I'm just going to uh, find the opacity that I like. Mm. We'll go with about 60. And I like that. Okay, so now for the next step, you need to merge all of your layers down. And zoom back out. Okay. So now I'm going to create an actual sun up here in the sky. Oh, I gotta merge all the layers. Okay, so I'm gonna go to filters and then light and shadow and gradient flare. And then you can choose from all the different things that you want to use. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use distant sun. And you can play with the settings, you can make it bigger or rotate it, whatever you want. Okay, so now you've got a sun, but the rest of your picture doesn't really have any flare to it. So we're going to go ahead and add another flare, so light and shadow, and lens flare. Make sure your flare is in the middle of your sun and hit OK. 
and after this we are almost done. <coughs> I made the sun a little bit too high up since I'm going to crop the image, but that's okay. It'll still give a nice shiny effect to it. Okay, so now the last step is I'm just going to crop so that her head doesn't look like it's just cut off. Okay, so there you go. Easy enough, right? I hope I made this complicated looking picture look super easy for you guys. Um, always, if you have questions or if you want to request an edit because you don't want to actually edit something like this yourself, or if you want to learn how to do this kind of edit with one-on-one -on -one actual teaching kind of setting, I do classes on Facebook and you're always welcome to contact me on there if you have questions or if you want to request anything. Request tutorials or edits or whatever. Alright, thanks for watching.